You know, I have to commend you that not only have you made it throughout the entire season here for the likes, the leans, the locks, seven, seven days a week. But here you are on the final day for us to really get an idea of where everything is. And spoiler alert, there's nothing, nothing on the board. But we are going to squeeze as much blood out of this rock as humanly possible. That's what we do here. And yeah, every game, we promise you, every game on the slate, even now, where you have so much crap, we'll see what just floats right up to the top. Thumbs up, subscribe, please. I don't ask much. Actually, I don't ask anything but that. I'll give you other stuff, whether or not you want to take advantage of it. We're going to fly through this thing. I don't want you to think this is some 45-minute odyssey of an adventure throughout Sunday's slate. We're going to fly through this thing. You're going to get 15 picks. It's almost like 15 plays in five minutes. That's five and five. Check that video out. But look, look, we start with a big one. Not really. Two teams in Atlanta and Boston that aren't really doing much, right? I mean, let's look at this. You've got bench galore here, and this is going to be a theme. So let's keep this thing moving as fast as possible. You've got a lot of bench guys out here on both teams. Nothing's going to change with these two teams. Nothing like that at all. In fact, you're going to have both bench teams starting, right? Both benches starting in this game. The energy, the emotion, just getting out there and, and getting up and down the floor, that's going to be a first half thing. So I think the best thing you can do in situations like this, there are a couple of ways to target it, but it also depends on the nature of the game. Like, is the team eliminated? Is the team just set? What have you. Two playoff teams like this running their bench. I want to target the over. That's what I want to do. I want to target the over in this game because I think I can get enough points in the first half that even if things settle a little bit, we're good to go. We open up on a 15-game slate. Final day, meaningless action across the board with a lock. Lock up the over in this Celtics-Hawks game. Absolutely. We move on. Now, this game here between the Bulls and Pistons, I don't know what you're really expecting, but I'm going to lean Chicago first half. I think Detroit is going to do their best to stay in this game for like a quarter. And then things are going to just start to evaporate as far as whatever is happening with Detroit. Look, they need to continue to lose. We know that. At the same time, with Chicago locked into the play-in spot, nothing's changing with them by any means. So you look at this game and think, well, where is Chicago's bench? Just again, well, like you talked about, your, your resting starters. Where is your bench best to attack first half? First half over in the total here. For both Detroit, who's going to come out firing because they've got guys that are just pulling off the street, and Chicago, who better be looking that way, not starting anybody of note. That's going to transfer into bench points, which means more points than starter points. First half over total for Chicago is our lean. Next up, Cleveland hosting Charlotte. Look, Cavs on the spread. Charlotte is miserable. Charlotte is eliminated. Charlotte is just a difficult thing to stomach on a day-to-day -day basis watching that team. But the Cavs, and this is another scenario that we try and take advantage of, Cavs resting guys in order to prepare for the playoffs means their bench is going to be playing up and down. We just saw that with the Sixers and a couple of other teams where their bench is just coming out firing because they know, shit, this is it. We're not going to see many minutes. So I'm going to lean the spread here with the Cavs. I'm going to lay the points as big as that may seem Although I know everybody's going to sit for Cleveland, I'm just betting their bench by all means. That's a lean right there for Cleveland with the points. All right, next up, look, we got to go over here. We have to go over on this total. It will pop. You let me know in the comments by all means, but Miami hosting Orlando, the magic we've seen get destroyed, then bounce back with a big win, and then all, okay, don't worry about Orlando. Worry about Miami settled into this play-in scenario, not trying to play anybody again of note. And already, because of injury, because of staggered rotation and anything in between, has seen some guys deeper on the bench 
play some quality minutes. So you're getting an advantage here. I just think this transfers over to points more so than anything else. And that's why I'm just pushing this total over more than anything else. Again, you let me know when this thing pops. We have been targeting over successfully with Miami. Changes if it's at 220 or yeah, something like that. I don't think it will be 221 or something. I think it'll be under that, even with, or especially with Orlando. So you can definitely lean with me on the over with the heat. Now, lean with me, New Jersey, Colorado, Virginia, Ohio. You have to be 21 or older gambling problem. Call 1-800-GAMBLER. As you know, sign up, deposit 10 bucks, claim that offer. Bet a dollar and then get 200 right back. Bet 365. This is insane. I don't know why you wouldn't take advantage of this. We are doing this here for you. Jump in. My God, you have to be in those four states. But if you are and you haven't taken advantage of this, I just don't get it. Never understood why you wouldn't with the ability to. I'll walk you through it. You can hit me up at Shander Show on Twitter. You have any questions about it, you let me know. Philadelphia on the spread here. No, no, nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. We'll get to them in a second. I think I'm just going to lean over in this game. Neither one of these teams are going to play the Brooklyn Nets. This is a preview of the playoffs, right? This is a preview of the first round. So what are you truly going to get? Now, think about this. If this were like week 17 in the NFL and you were about to see the same two teams play in the wild card under conservative, all this other stuff. But these are two teams who are locked in not only to their spot, but their matchup. It's going to be bench, bench, and more bench. Shake Milton for 40. Like this is going to be a serious game where guys are going to get up and down and up and down because this truly is it. There are guys who will not see minutes, maybe not more than one minute in a playoff game moving forward. They're going to be out there launching. So you better believe I'm going over with the Nets on a lean. Knicks laying nine, dipped a little bit down to eight and a half. I'm okay there. This is a lock play, by the way. Lock play because the Knicks have been going deep. The Knicks are probably going to start, like the Knicks are going to play guys who are staggering between quality minutes and bench minutes. I know sometimes that overlaps. You're not going to see, just because the starting five is out, doesn't mean that you're not going to see seventh, eighth men guys, type guys on the floor. The Knicks are just that much more talented and deeper than the Pacers, who are interested in nothing right now but losing basketball games. That's it. So I'm okay. We've seen these big spreads, like 17, 18. You say, whoa, whoa, slow down just a little bit. I'm okay with laying eight and a half here and locking it up because the Pacers have absolutely nothing to live for when it comes to basketball. Just nothing. Just get in. They are a soulless vessel, as we've used that to describe teams like the Mavericks, who did that by choice, mind you. But Pacers, cooked. Nothing here. They're sitting, guys. They're sitting starters on a bad team. That should tell you everything right now. This team has nothing, and that's why we lock up the Knicks. Houston, Washington. I mean, what do you want here? What do you really want from this game? Seriously. I don't think that you're going to see anything of note. By the way, the Cavs are also motivated way back then because finishing on a positive note with that season historically. This game with the Rockets and Washington Wizards, I, I want nothing to do with. I am leaning over on the total, though. And I do think you're just going to see tempo in this game. There's no reason for anybody on the floor in the final game here now to take their time doing it. You are playing for the future, your future, not your team's future, your future. There's absolutely no reason to do anything at all. So I'll go over Houston, Washington without a problem at all in its finest. And I love the fact that we're going to get points in this game. It's just a matter of where they come from. One team will probably do more heavy lifting than the other. We move to Toronto, hosting the Bucks. I think I'm just going to go under here. Milwaukee is basically fielding like a 10th seed. The squad that they put out there is probably day in and day out like a, 10, a 9 or 10 seed in the East or West, depending on what you look. So they're not bad by any means. Defensively, they're going to be there. Toronto at home defensively, we know has been a key here. 
bench comes in and you're going to see some more minutes with those guys than we're used to. But we just go back to this whole thing about Toronto defense at home has been their theme. And the Bucs are still a team. Look, I just don't think you're going to get a lot of points from this Bucs backup squad. I think defensively they're there. I think they're going to score. But you're going to have a decent total. And that total is just going to be too high. It doesn't mean this can't be a higher scoring game. It just means whatever the total is, we're going to go low. When this pops up, you let me know. But I've got nothing in this game that would indicate that Milwaukee's bench is going to put up a buck 30. In fact, they're probably more motivated to limit Toronto, no matter who's out there for Toronto. San Antonio is at Dallas. Kind of have to blind bet the Spurs, don't you, on the, on the spread? With all of the shit that surrounds the Dallas Mavericks night right now, why would you trust that they have anything put together? You know that their star players are down, which is going to minimize the spread to an extent, but it's still San Antonio. They still got worked. And they still come into the second leg of a back-to-back. I just don't know what more you're going to get here. So I'm, I'm just going to continue to bank on the Dallas Mavericks in this tailspin where the Spurs never got off the ground. I mean, Dallas was cruising. Altitude level was cruising. Or altitude was cruise level. Whatever the hell. The altitude level was cruise. Whatever the phrase is. I don't fly. Or I haven't in a while. No, it's not a COVID thing, you idiot. I'm just not flying. If I can drive it, why not? Isn't it so much easier? You have so much more control. You have so much more control over your trip, your destination, everything there. I, I, sitting in traffic, you pull out. You're on that tarmac because you're cooked. I'm going to go with the Spurs on the spread simply because Dallas is not a team I want anything to do with. Denver, on the other hand, hold on. Denver, absolutely. But here, it's a first half spread play that I think makes the most sense. Sacramento is not starting anybody like Sacramento is so new to this whole tank and then get ready for the playoffs thing because they haven't been in the playoffs that they're pulling dudes out that you just don't know and from that level right there you're going to get some points but Denver's been doing this a little bit and I love the fact that they come in come in with game legs right guys that are fresh that haven't been as conditioned are coming in now with a game under their belt, maybe a couple, depending on how you've seen this Denver squad towards the end of the regular season. There's a lot here with Denver. And they've got some good depth. But we talk about this where you're dealing with two playoff teams, running a bench, going with a home team. Essentially a pick them here. Not pick them, I shouldn't say that. I'm going with the home team. The advantage is Denver at home with guys who may not have played much at Denver before. The St. DeMontis Sabonis and De'Aaron Fox. So we'll take Denver on the first half spread. Next up, New Orleans at Minnesota. This game is awful, awful. This game is just difficult to look at. It's a pick em. This game is truly a pick em. This is a pick em game, 0-0. Zero, zero. Plus 100, plus 100. Yet you can get... What most likely will be three and a half. Are, are you, three and a half? Yeah, three and a half. Three and a half you're going to get on this spread. So just take it. We've done this before the last couple of days of the regular season. There doesn't need to be much number analysis data for this type of play. It's just you've whittled it down to it's essentially a pick em. There's no home court advantage. So just take the three and a half. If it's three and a half, it's different if it's two and a half. But it's three and a half. And that's why we'll take the Pelicans on that spread. Oklahoma City hosting Memphis. Nobody's playing in this game, as you can imagine. I'm actually, you know, I'm trying to think of, well, what's going to carry over? You rely if you're the Thunder, and we see what happens without him so much on a volume scorer in SGA. Memphis, while they do have a couple, and like Jaws, clearly the, but... Well, there are guys that you can point to that are scorers and a couple of volume scorers or capability, at least, of volume scoring. The big thing here is that all those guys are gone. So Memphis, from 1 to 10, what have you, the focus on defense doesn't move. 
And the Thunder just struggle without their key cog on the floor scoring buckets. So it would lean me to the under here more so than anything else. It would just be a matter of focusing on not having your main guys on one end and also on the other side being consistent on defense. That's all. That's really it. All right, three games to go. I want to get you in on the Discord, though, real quick. All right, this is going to be easy stuff. I'm going to give you half off your first week. Insider access below. Just click on that link. Sign up. ES Insider is my code. And yes, we are doing awesome stuff. You can add it to the list. All right. This was, what, Friday night? Two parlays on the Odd Chopper Discord coming through. Let's do it. You know, I absolutely think this is the way in which we continue to go and push. It's just bring you on the Discord and win parlays. That's all. How about the Cleveland Cavaliers the other night? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's going down on the Discord too. See? Screenshot of the Discord here. All right? Major shit happening. That's why we want you in. We're doing more than just the NBA, but the NBA playoffs, you better believe it, it's happening. It is happening. I'm going to jam these in here. Rapid fire. Utah plus 17. You just saw them win. This team is not giving up. This team is fighting. This team knows that they're kind of in limbo and they're trying to ruin days. Taking on a Lakers team. This has already dropped to 16 and a half. That's fine. Get in while you can. Ain't no way in hell the Lakers are covering a 16 and a half point spread right now. They're just trying to win and get in and do what they can. This is not a pressure point for the Lakers to win this game by a million. And Utah's going to hang. You could also take Utah first half. I like that, but I'll take the 17 in its entirety. Same thing. Like, this line is moving. It's probably at 13 right now when you look at it. But I don't know who's going to sit for Phoenix. So this is going to shift once guys sit for Phoenix. I'm just getting ahead of this and taking the Clippers plus 12 and a half, 13, knowing it's going to swing back down a little bit. Yeah, everybody's out for the LA Clippers. I get it. But so guys are going to be out for the Phoenix Suns as well. Make no mistake. Last, this dipped a half point. Tells me I'm in the right spot here because I hit up our producer, Kennedy, earlier and said, hey, Portland plus 17 and a half. She gave me the thumbs up. Now I'm looking at it here. As we're recording, it's 17. So this is dipping. Why? Because it's the Warriors. And the Warriors have underachieved and they deserve, they deserve to be faded on this ridiculous of a number. Despite there being such a wide talent gap, the Golden State Warriors can't do shit on the road. That's okay, because they're not covering that 17 point spread or 17 and a half point spread. That's it. One more time. I just like this one. All right. We'll see you. Appreciate it. Postseason is coming. Playing game and all that. So don't go anywhere. Lindy, myself, we got you. See you on the Discord. See you on the Odd Shop.